and there's a look north up University Avenue towards Queens Park. And hey folks, it is Monday, March 25th. The time is 5.45 p.m. and the temperature is a little more spring-like, 9 degrees Celsius. And I say that as ever since spring officially rolled in, it's been a little on the cold side. And we've had a fair amount of snow. But it's starting to look and feel a bit more like spring today. I'm currently heading south on University Avenue. And for this one, I'll be making a left at Gerard Street West here. And I'll walk east along the entire downtown stretch of Gerard Street. And I think I'll probably finish up in East Chinatown, or rather over in East Chinatown. And that's a look to the south. And this area is known as the Discovery District. Coast is clear. And there's four major hospitals right in this area. There's the Toronto General Hospital, Sick Kids, Princess Margaret, and Mount Sinai. This is moving east along the north side of Gerard Street. And this walk should be just over three kilometers in total. And on the left is Toronto General Hospital. And on the right is the world renowned Sick Kids. And once I cross Young Street, I'll be on Gerard Street East, as Young is the main east west divide. And Gerard Street continues all the way into Scarborough. And it's divided into two stretches. You could call this Lower Gerard, and that spans about six kilometers. Then at Coxwell, it takes a slight jog to the north. And that stretch is often referred to as Upper Gerard, and that's about four kilometers in length. This is Elizabeth Street. It doesn't look like I'm going to make the light. There's the Emerge entrance to Toronto General.
Thank you so much. That's no worries. No worries. person had dropped their pen and this is why I'm choosing to walk east walking west would be directly into the sun and this is La Plante Avenue and from about the 20s to the 60s this area was known as Gerard Village and it had kind of a Greenwich Village feel to it. Thank you. But there's not many buildings from those days remaining. This is Bay Street to the south of here will be the city's financial district. It'll also take you alongside City Hall. And this condo, the Livemore is notable for featuring a number of three bedroom units and that's not something you find too often in all these new downtown developments. And you'll notice there is a bike lane which is protected throughout the stretch. I think I tried to look up how old it was at one point and couldn't pin down when exactly the bike lanes were installed. look into College Park and on the right side of the street we have the Chelsea Hotel and rooms or at least their most standard room is going for about $300 with tax around this time It's a solid three and a half stars on TripAdvisor. Here's where the old Elephant and Castle pub used to be. And that later became a cannabis dispensary. Now, I think that building is up for redevelopment. They might be. Saving the exterior, but we might see a condo stick up out of it. We do have for lease signs in the window. Speaking of new condos, there is Concord Sky going up. And on that corner of Jordan Young used to be the Big Slice, an iconic pizza shop that shut down in 2016 to make way for this development. Originally the YSL residences. The first developer went belly up. And Concord has taken it over. And this is Young Street. We're looking southbound. Dundas Square is just a few minutes to the south of here. As is the Eaton Center. Look at the rendering for Concord Sky. And 
here is the Covenant House. A known spot for taking care of youth in need. There's the St. James Hotel. I could not look up a price for the room there. It said they're all booked up. I was just trying to stealthily look that up. On the right is TMU, the school formerly known as Ryerson. We are in a part of town known as the Garden District, which is bound by Young Street to the west. I think Carlton Street to the north, Sherburn to the east, and Queen Street to the south. the TMU Center for Urban Innovation in the home of the old Ontario College of Pharmacy going back to 1882. This will be Church Street coming up. North of here is the Church Wellesley Village. a really good Thai restaurant, Sam Tum Jinda. And we're about to walk past a Toronto institution. And that is Harvey's, a charbroiled fast food burger joint. And 
It's affectionately known as Hooker Harvey's. I remember when I started doing walks on this channel, I was playing around with Google Maps and I popped Hooker Harvey's into Google and it dropped a pin right on this location. That's a reference to the kind of nightlife you used to be able to find in this area. I think by the early 2000s, most of the street walkers and that sort of activity that started shifting online to things like Craigslist. Like it's very rare you see any of that activity these days. This is Jarvis Street and there is the Econo Lodge. That's a hotel that was turned over into a shelter during the pandemic. I think it still might be functioning in that capacity. Every time I look up rooms online, since they're not available to be booked. Well, they, they did that in uh, Nordstrom for a while. That's how I found Maybe they moved the trolley. There, but they don't have anything like that. There's the German Street Baptist Church. And I'm about to walk alongside the Allen Gardens. And this neighborhood gets its name the Allen, or the Garden District from, rather. That's George Street. There's a large shelter just on the left down that street. There's a look into the Allen Gardens. botanical gardens that's open to the public but the centerpiece is a glass dome building called the palm house that's currently got construction hoarding around it did a video last year and I put this is Toronto on the thumbnail as this park was an enormous encampment. There were tents and piles of bicycles which I'm sure were all purchased through legitimate channels all over the place. And I'm not sure where everyone went. It's kind of interesting in a public park. They have fenced off an area and there used to be signs saying no photos or videos, but last I checked, we're in public. Wow, what a difference. There's currently a very large encampment at Clarence Square on the west side of downtown. Hopefully everyone's found warm spaces indoors. we get to Sherburne Street. I 
sign there says Cabbage Town South. It is a five minute walk away. And you might notice a lack of transit on Gerard Street. Well, just to the south of here along Dundas, going east-west, there are streetcars, as well as just north of here on Carlton Street. And those Carlton streetcars actually head southbound Parliament, and they turn onto Gerard Street. So we'll be seeing some 506 Carlton streetcar action pretty soon. These homes all date back to the late 1800s. This is Seaton Street. And I do not know what the development is going in over there. I'm assuming based on the size of the pit they've excavated, it will be a large condo. Can I see that sign there? Old Cabbage Town. There's some very rough looking retail spaces. Custer Taco doesn't appear to be open. Gerard Convenience. Cabbage Town is known for having North America's largest collection of Victorian style homes. And it used to be much bigger. A lot of it was cleared out for large scale housing developments. And we're about to walk past one of them, Regent Park. Another one of those developments is to the north of here called St. James or St. Jamestown. a Toronto Public Library. That little parquette there is called Anniversary Park. I've been meaning to try this Japanese street food spot out. There's a 506 Carlton, that'll be 
making a left here, but that one is only going to Coxwell. That will not be going all the way to Main Street Station. That would be the main retail drag through Cabbage Town. Uh, Parliament Street here. And I don't know if this development on the southeast corner there is part of Regent Park or not. the streetcar in the other direction. And it is Daniels on Parliament, so I don't think that is part of Regent Park. I thought Regent Park was under Tridell as far as the latest phase goes. Speaking of which, it looks like they're finally ready to move on from these apartment buildings here. They're all boarded up. So the residents, these are rent controlled units, or rather they're low income units. So the residents would be relocated and then offered a space in the new mixed income buildings that go up. We'll be trading in an older but larger space for a newer, smaller one. I believe this is the final phase of the Regent Park redevelopment. Here's a restoration going on. It used to be dotted with these low-rise brown apartment buildings. I'll be doing an updated video touring Regent Park in the near future, so stay tuned for that. And this is Sackville Street coming up. I imagine this garden center will be ready to rock and roll pretty soon. On the north side of the street, which is my left here, is the historic Cabbage Town, and on the right, a very different Regent Park. <laughs> and I wonder when this thing last worked. Oh wow, collect calls, dial star 11. I remember back when I was in high school, when I was at basketball practice, I would collect call my dad from the payphone to pick me up if I didn't have a quarter. It would just say, you have a collect call from. And I would say, it's me, come pick me up, would be my message. And he'd put the phone down and come get me. I 
nice little scam we had going there. Of course, if I had money, I would just call. That was before the days of cell phones. And you'll notice there's no bike lanes along this stretch. And it looks like these buildings are still occupied. So that's probably incorrect and in guessing they're on to the final phase of redevelopment. Is Sumac Street coming up? And Gerard Street takes its name from a gentleman named Samuel Gerard. I believe he was an Anglo Irish Canadian citizen. Must have been successful to have the street named after him, and that was during the 1700s, if I'm not mistaken. I think he also may have played a role in government. Back then, this was all just Upper Canada. I mentioned it before, but if you want to see what Regent Park was like back in its heyday, look up Farewell to Oak Street on YouTube. It's an excellent old documentary showcasing what life was like. The area was pretty much a slum back then. And this is Sword Street, possibly the street with the coolest name in the city. There is a Hindu temple, if I'm not mistaken. And this is River Street. Just to the north is Riverdale Park West, along with the Riverdale Zoo. We're about to cross over the Don River and head out of downtown. Bike lanes have temporarily reappeared.
this overpass I'm about to head over is a little over 400 feet. And that was built in the 1920s. I think it replaced a wooden bridge that was in its spot before it. And it'll take us over Bayview Avenue, the Don River, and the Don Valley Parkway. There's Bayview Avenue and a rail corridor just next to it. Don River. And everything south of Bloor to the west of the Don River is downtown. And to the east is the Riverdale neighborhood. And this highway here, the Don Valley Parkway has been dubbed the Don Valley parking lot. What time is it? It is 624 and traffic is moving really well. I would have guessed that this time at least the northbound traffic would have been backed up quite a bit. Shows what I know. There's the Hennick Bridgepoint Hospital. Or maybe Riverdale Hospital, or rather Riverdale Hospital stood on that spot before it was torn down and the new hospital was built. Yes, stopping behind the line is difficult. Don Jail, which serves as an administrative office for the hospital, is just over there on the left. That dates back to 1864. There's a 501 Queen Street bus. Those are essentially streetcar replacements queued up. This park here is named after William Peyton Hubbard, the first elected black official in the city of Toronto. He also served as mayor. As we're about to enter East Chinatown, and further to the east of here is the Gerard Little India Bazaar. Toronto Chinese Archway that went up back in 2009. This is the smaller and lesser known of the two Toronto proper Chinatowns. Let's look into Hubbard Park.
And no, that's a streetcar. I wanted to grab, well, I'll take the next one, I guess. Shouldn't be too long, the 504 and 505 go north up Broadview here. Up to Broadview Station. There's the Riverdale branch of the Toronto Public Library dating back to 1910. And I believe that's the only branch where you can get service in Chinese. All right, I think I see another streetcar making its way up. I'm gonna head north up to Broadview Station. Just a neat look towards the skyline. I always point the camera away whenever there's horn honking going on. Oh, camera got stuck. All right, I'm gonna hop on the streetcar, so I hope you enjoyed this one. Let me know your thoughts and comments down below as I made my way along all of Gerard Street. Well, the downtown portion. I have links to my Patreon and YouTube channel membership down in the description. I have an Instagram account at Johnny Strides and I get my payment ready here. There's a super thanks button appearing down below the video if you wish to say thanks that way. Maybe it's there we go. All right. Thanks for watching, guys.